your own device functionality is a must have in today's meetings. And USB audio is a huge part of this equation for the QSIS platform. It lets the user quickly interface their own laptop and other devices with the room systems for presenting, teleconferencing, and more. The Core 110F, for instance, features a Type-B USB connection that lets you simultaneously stream up to 16 channels of USB audio in and 16 channels out to a single device. To enable this ability, go to the Core's Properties panel and change the USB endpoint count from 0 to 1. This creates input and output components that you can drag into your schematic that will either receive or send audio across the USB connection. Your PC and any appropriate applications should see a new device called QSIS Core 110F with a connection label based on your settings. You can actually have up to four different endpoints running across this USB connection for use by various programs, but most users will probably only need one or two. One common use for this connection would be for teleconferencing. You could run the audio of a PC program, such as Skype or Link, to the core to play your telephone call over a conference room's high-quality loudspeakers, and use the core to process the conference room's microphones before sending them back to the PC. Basically, you'd be turning your QSIS system into an external echo-canceling speakerphone for your laptop. In fact, if you have this USB endpoint's type configured as a speakerphone, then this USB connection will be identified as a speakerphone by your conference application. If you select it in the PC audio configuration menu as the default communications device, you'll connect quickly and automatically. Since this type of telephone audio will be in mono, you'll notice that the components only have one input pin and one output pin. You'll want to use an acoustic echo canceller to process the audio of this conference call. For an example of a simple AEC setup, check out our training quick start video of the acoustic echo canceller. The other type of connection is called sound card. In this example, the PC will identify the USB endpoint as a line out or an aux in channel. By default, this will provide you with two channels for a stereo connection. You can increase the number of channels up to eight, but be aware that Windows has a limitation that prevents it from handling more than two channels. Fortunately, you can correct this by installing a universal ASIO driver. You can find these drivers for free online, such as this website, asioforall.com. You could also change the sound card's input mode from line to speaker. You would use this option if your room has, let's say, a PC with a Blu-ray player connected to the core via the USB. If you selected Speaker, the core's USB connection will self-identify as a speaker output from the PC. This allows you to specify a stereo, quadraphonic, 5.1, or 7.1 system so that the PC will appropriately deliver surround sound audio across the USB channels. In this mode, the USB output in QSIS will be seen as a USB line-in to the computer. The most important thing to keep in mind when configuring your USB connections is that the USB input in QSIS is the output for the PC, and the output connection in QSIS is the input to the PC. Just remember that the terms input and output in QSIS are from the core's point of view, and you'll be fine. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.